All right. So first thing first, you would have received some sample case studies over email and uh, I request everyone that please download the same and extract in a folder. Do not open any file from that zip attachment because if you try to make some notes, it will not update the archive file. So just download that zip attachment as it is. Right click up on the same and go for extract all and you'll be getting the file details something like this. And once it is done, kindly confirm in one line of message in the chat box D for done or Y for yes. Okay, Sunil Chaturvedi, I have not received any email. Fine. Uh, I have also not received the email. Just check it out. I mean, definitely you would have uh, got this. Kindly check your inbox or spam or junk something because sometimes you would have got there. Let me also confirm that whether I have sent it across because all the emails were added. Uh, so, Sunil. Uh, your email ID is there. Anyway, I'm just forwarding again. Yeah, who else is not received? Uh, okay. Yes, well, you can check it out now. Anybody else who has not received the case studies? Yeah, great. So kindly download all the case studies files, people, as I told you, and uh, extract them to a new folder. OK, so let me share my screen. So you will be having this kind of files when you open that with the attachment and extract the files. OK. Now, coming back to a program, since this is a virtual training program, your continuous engagement is also necessary, people. So please refrain using your mobile phone calls or any other emails, WhatsApp charts and all, because all the topics are relevant. This is how it has been designed. And it's not just one end. I keep sharing my screen and telling you and you have to just blindly listen to me. You can ask your questions also. You can uh, clarify all your doubts then and there, whatever the queries you have. And whenever you want to ask any query, of course, we'll be utilizing our mic option. So you can unmute and speak about your query. If you believe there's a lot of noise, noise around, don't use mic option, use the chat box. So this chat box will be always open throughout this training program. You can drop your queries and I'll be definitely helping you out with the right answer by reading out your query. 
And if you believe your audio exchange or text exchange is also not enough, you want my presence on your screen. We do have a screen sharing option also. So next to the mic, you can share your screen, but do not share a specific window. I repeat, do not share a specific window while sharing the options. Then you should go for sharing entire screen or entire desktop. Because if you share a specific window, then the dialog box launchers will be missing and have not been a state to help you properly. So this is how we are going to communicate throughout this entire training program. Now, instead of being alien to each other this in meeting room, let's have a quick introduction first so that you can ask your questions in the comfort zone and let me know the understanding of yours and what exactly your expectations from this program. Everything we can just precisely make a summary out of this. And at the end of the day, when I explain all about the topics, it will be giving you more confidence to make your things better. So let me start with myself. My name is Pravas Panda. Past 17 years, I've been to this MS office training and consulting. Wow, and I, I owned a small organization called Excel for All. So the expertise is not confined to Excel, though the name is confined to Excel. But yes, <laughs> we have got the complete expertise along with entire MS office applications with the ETL tools like Power BI, W, and we are providing training to uh, yeah, uh, Sudha, could you please keep your mic on mute? Yeah, no. thank you. So along with this, we are providing training on finance modeling with Excel and finance for non-finance or art of finance for the corporates. And this kind of training program we conduct only in the weekends for those people, for the working professionals who don't get an opportunity to, I mean, learn the uh, things better in their working environment because the a lot of work pressure would be there and they can't focus entirely on the training part. That's why we are organizing this kind of workshops in the weekends. So this is a brief introduction about me. Now I am more interested to know about you as well as the expectations from this 16 hours of program. So I'll be calling out the name from our group. You have to help yourself with a two line of introduction and the expectations from the training. So I'll be asking to our friend. Let me just precisely give it. Yeah, so I'll start with our friend Aruna Devi. So Aruna, could you please just help you out with some introduction about yourself and the expectations from this program? Yes, Aruna, you are in mute. You can unmute and speak. Okay, we'll come back to Aruna later. Next, I'll go to Daniel. Yes, Daniel, your mic is on mute. You can unmute and speak. Okay, Nandini. All right. Next, we'll go to Pransi. Hi, uh, Parashi is actually my daughter's name. You must be okay. saying NKG. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, no my name is Parasha, and uh, mm -hmm. my main focus is to do that Excel validation uh, like in, in like two to three minutes because in my case, I have the data. I mean, I would say 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, and then I have to validate that whether, uh, I mean, basically on, on a daily basis that, that what all things have been changed on a daily basis published the reports. So that kind of focus, uh, that kind of thing I am really focusing on. So data validation, data cleansing, uh, I would say report publishing, mm -hmm. uh, basically the, the pie chart report and sometimes it is the graph, I would say the graphical report, bar graph kind of. So that's what my focus is. No problem. Well, next I'll go to Shaivas. Yes, Shaivas, your mic is uh, on mute. So good afternoon. Sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Very Shaivas. I like uh, I'm looking after like advanced Excel. I'm looking after the formulas which are used in a daily life, like so whatever mm -hmm. Excel we are formatting or by uh, word or matching two to three files, mm -hmm. and also to learn some shortcuts which will make uh, like uh, <clears throat> my work better. Okay.
All right. Next, I'll go to Sudha. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Myself, Sidharani. Yeah. I want to learn this class for improving my Excel skills. Sir. Excel skills. Okay. Next, I'll go to Sunil. Sir, good afternoon. Very good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sunil Chaturvedi, and uh, to uh, I want to improve my basic Excel knowledge because we are uh, working in sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. so we are not efficient on that. <laughs> that what so some some of my colleagues who have uh, done uh, training from your side suggested to join. Okay. That is the reason I joined this class. Okay, no problem. That's okay. fine. Next, I'll go to Venkatesh. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, my name is Venkatesh Kakade and mm -hmm. I'm working in Cummins India in uh, supply chain department. Uh, my acceptation from this course is uh, to know about the uh, advanced Excel uh, formulas, whatever you have to use Piot, how to uh, done with the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, data mm -hmm. analysis. Mm -hmm. and, and also I want to learn the some uh, micro Excel micros. Uh, these the these used to reduce my working time or uh, dashboard making dashboard for mm -hmm. whatever uh, I'm performing my work. That okay. that the things I want to learn from this course. Sure, I'll help you out with all these things except one thing, Venkatesh, uh, because we are not going to discuss anything macro because we do not combine macro with our advanced Excel. And the reason yeah. is being there. Macro is not everyone's cup of tea. To learn yeah. macro, you must have good knowledge in Excel. That is our primary prerequisite. And second thing, when we go for Excel VBA macro, we are not going to touch anything in the Excel. We are going to deal with our direct window option, this of VBA editor. So this is the macro window. We'll be completely working on this, like understanding the type of macro, how to design the small coding, how to do the uh, like our debugging, how to uh, create your own calculator and how to call the Excel commands in this macro uh, module itself so that you can make your macro the robust one. We'll be discussing completely in this window. That's why we do not combine these two topics. But yes, yes. there are certain things in Excel already you have which you use the same. You don't need even a macro. So definitely I'll covering all this part. Don't worry. OK, yes, thank you. Right, no problem. So next I'll go to Venki. Yes, thank you. You can unmute yeah, and speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, Prabhas. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Basically, I purpose of joining is I is supposed to be helpful for me my project management activities. Okay, mm -hmm. to improve my you know daily acting, uh, reporting uh, chart, Gantt chart, uh, uh, and uh, and also pivot chart and the daily data. I mean weekly, monthly data to the customers. So, yeah. So that is that is what this is. I'm excited. Okay. No issues. All right, friends. So I believe now that I have noted down all your expectations. So anything is missing, you are always welcome in this two days program. I mean, 16 hours program. And definitely I'll help you out with all your needs. Don't worry about it. OK, so now let's go and start working with our data. So training is of 16 hours. Why so many files? So let me take you through over here first the file not audible. Well, Daniel able to hear us. Hello. Hello, Daniel able to hear us. We can't hear you. Sorry, you just check your mic. Your mic is on mute. You can unmute and speak. OK, so here training is of 16 hours program, but why so many files I have shared with you? The reason is being there, people, I'll tell you. First of all, I'm not going to tell you only the Excel features or teach you training with the Excel functionalities, what Microsoft has designed. Along with that, I'm also going to give you some solutions for the problems what you face in your routine activities. Now you can ask me a question to us. What kind of problem we face you mean to like? The most common problem is about file size management or data management because most of the time what it happens 
when you design one Excel file and keep incorporating your data on daily basis on fine morning, what happens? The entire file size becomes huge, and when you take that and try to present it to the audience, it takes a lot of time to open. So that's the place where people we always struggle and that kind of files. What it happens, you know, it degrades our productivity and speed. And we don't have any the options because we don't want to take any kind of risk. If you try to do something, there might be a chance of data loss. That fear is also in our mind. So this is the reason why we just know that file has a problem, but still we keep working with that and struggle. So what I suggest is instead of doing that, there is a what document I have shared with you. Just watch my screen. No need to do anything. So eight ways to reduce your Excel file size. Very precisely, this document has been designed along with the screenshots and the stepwise instructions you will be finding over here. I'll take you through one sample data. Just see. We had a file of 14.6 MB, OK? Without deleting any single content out of that file or without removing any content out of that, we have just updated this method and we could reduce our Excel file size by 28%, which is really a biggest achievement. So like this, there are eight different ways we have prescribed people. So whenever time permits, go to this document, read that even though you don't remember the steps, but yes, you do have an option. You do have a helping hand with you or who knows tomorrow. Anybody from your teammates may come across this kind of problem. You can be a helping hand to them, right? So this is the reason why this file I have shared with you just to give a helping hand. Now there is one more file you could notice naming called keyboard shortcuts. So when you go for this keyboard shortcuts file, you will be finding entire list of keyboard shortcuts, not only Microsoft Excel, but also Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, the Office applications, what we use the most, the entire keyboard shortcuts are listed over here. Only thing is you have to daily basis practice on the same. And why it is necessary? Yes, the reason is in today's world, time is money. Though you do your work by navigating through mouse, but that is time consuming. So each and every activity, at least you could save some five to 10 seconds. So at the end of the day, if you consolidate minimum one hour, you can save because of your keyboard shortcuts. So overnight, nothing is possible. You have to only keep practicing and make a point. Just learn two keyboard shortcuts in a day and try to implement at your workplace. And trust me, if you develop this habit within 30 days, you can see a significant growth at your workplace because of the keyboards shortcuts helps you a lot. So this is again one inventory I have shared with you. Just make use of that. Keep it on your desktop and daily basis practice upon the same. Now there's one more file naming called learning Excel free. So here if you open that notepad, you'll be finding the 10 website names I have prescribed. So this is nothing but after attending this two days training program, instead of going to someone YouTube channel and later getting frustrated, what I suggest is go to all these websites and you can get to know Excel even further level. And the beauty is entire thing is complimentary. You don't need to pay a single penny for that. But yes, you have to go for some kind of paid suppose courses, then you have to pay for it. But the beauty of this sites is they have their own forums where you can ask your questions and the experts, they will be giving the answer to you. And one more advantage of these websites are is over here. I mean, the moment Microsoft comes up with a new upgrades or new versions, new update, new formula, new function, then these sites also keep updating their contents. It's not like 10 years before what you have seen now will be the same. No, there will be always continuous updates on that particular sites. Whatever I've listed, you'll be getting that. And you can easily connect with that your data because they are using the proper industry based case studies. So this is how, the reason why people I have shared this notepad file just to learn Excel whenever time permits even further level if you have a wish. Now there's one more file over here. You can notice I have shared with you naming called office repair. So most of the time what it happens when you work with your huge volume of data, Excel gives some kind of error accidentally by mistake unknowingly not intentional so what kind of error excel not responding excel stopped working excel is restarted or screen becomes hang and you have to restart your system so in that case how to handle this kind of files so basically your file needs a repair so how to repair those files just see 
what you can do, you can select this one of the link out of this, copy that, go to your Microsoft browser, Edge, Google Chrome, or Mozilla Firefox, and then paste this link. It will take you to a dialog box or the site where you could see a tool will be available, and you need to download that tool. In order to be a tech savvy knowledge over here, or expert in some kind of softwares and all, just connect that file which is corrupted and you have to click the OK button. And trust me, just leave the system for a while. Taking its own time, people, trust me, 95% data can be recovered. Now you can ask me a question. What's the point? There will be data loss even. You are seeing as you 95% only data can be retrieved. Yes, there will be a chance of data loss of 5%. So what type of data? Like if you are connected uh, to, say, take an example, you have created some kind of diagrams in Excel like your process flow diagram, organization chart, or breakdown structures, anything. Ideally, we prefer to take the help of objectives and uh, we just design some kind of design over there, right? So those cases, there will be chance of data loss, right? But if you have created some kind of charts, graphs, tabular data, formula functions, you can retrieve as it is. And the beauty of this entire tool is complementary. You don't need to pay a single penny for that, but the limitations also there. You can get complementary service only up to 5 MB of Excel file size. So if your file size exceeds 5 MB, then you have to purchase the license of that. So this is how I have shared some documents with you people just to give a helping to help yourself whenever time permits, go for it and just make your job easy while working in Excel. So whatever the rest of the files is nothing but we have understood different different business and we have taken out some problem statements like taking some data from accounts, finance, production, planning, supply chain, sales or marketing, or maybe HR or safety could be the case. So the case study may be different. It may not be relevant. You feel a deep on your time, but the technique remains the same. And you never know, you may come across any kind of kind of scenarios. Then you don't need to depend upon third party. You have to help yourself. OK, so these are the files why we have shared. We got that idea over here now. Let's start working with our first file naming called case studies. Kindly open that. Now, go to the sheet called Business Maths. OK. Now, in this, what you need to do, I'll tell you, don't worry. But first of all, being an Excel user people, you need to know which version of Microsoft Excel is installed in our system. Then how to find out that? See, if you go to your file menu over there in this particular file, in the bottom, you'll be finding one option called account. If you do not get this account option directly, you can click on the more button and within that you will be finding account. And when you go for this account option, it will take you to your right side. Just see the version's name. So it shows in my system, it is Microsoft 365. Just check yours in this fashion and tell me what exactly your version installed in just quickly in the chat box. Oh, sir, I have a doubt. I just need to confirm that uh, yeah. the method which you have given from where we can recover all the files which are lost, the data is getting lost. For example, like I'm working on the Excel and I get a message like to uh, stop working or the file is corrupted. So all the data will be available over there or uh, no, that's what you mean. Only, only 95% data. If you have some diagrams, like your process flow diagram, organization chart, anything you have, so those types of cases, the data will be lost. But if you have some tabular data, formula, functions, charts, graphs, as it is, you can recover that. Yeah, except the diagrams. Everything will be available. Okay. Ah, that's right. right. Fine. 
So, OK. So Mr. Bajpay, he is having 2021 uh, of his standard 23 Sunil. OK, anybody else? Any other versions? Please drop me a message quickly in the chat box. Checking your version. Anybody 2016, 2019 or 2024 or Office 365? Check it out. Mm -hmm. So Arma is having 2016. Great. Uh, how about others? Quickly do, do that for me, please. OK, so as I understand, people are over here, different different versions they have. OK, now. Why I'm asking this the reason will be simple people. Suppose say if I explain something on my window and if you believe that feature, that function, that formula is missing, it's nothing but because of the versions difference. So only thing is you have to update your system to 365 and you will get to know all these features over there. OK, now you can ask me a question to us. There are so many versions you told 2013, 16, 19, 21, Office 365, 24. But ideally, suppose I want to purchase my own personal laptop. Which version will be ideal one? I would always suggest go for 365. The reason is 365 is the only version where you will be getting lot of formulas, functions, AI tools and formatting patterns and templates which you'd never have in any other versions of your Microsoft Excel. So let's start working with our data over there. Take a look. We have suppose say I have got the data. Now take a look at my screen in this entire data set. What happened? Daniel is something like he's also detected. OK. Right now, suppose say just watch my screen. No need to do anything. Suppose in this area, whatever the cells are there, I have highlighted all the cells should contain a word called Excel. So what we do exactly when it is there, what we do exactly? We go for just typing our text like over here. We go for typing our text Excel and then we select everything and then we go on. Over here, copy and pasting. This is one do else. We drag it down like this with the taking the help of mouse and again we drag it like this. This is to fill the data else. What we do, what we can do just see. Type your Excel in one cell and then select everything over here. And now what we need to do, we need to fill the data down. So instead of typing or going for this manual dragging option, just go for Control D to fill down and Control R to fill right. You can do that. So that will be helpful for your function and formula applications also. So to fill down something, use Control D. To fill right something, go for Control R. OK, so this is how we learned one thing right now. Again, control D and control R is basically two different operations we have to do for data population. So now how to overcome from this? I'll tell you. So first thing first, select your entire array. OK, then leave your mouse, leave your touchpad and type Excel. So you can notice it starts typing in the first cell of the entire selected range and then go for control enter. So control enter is nothing but the keyboard shortcut combination of control D and control R, which will be helping you to populate the entire data range over here. All right, just try this control D, control R and control enter. Is it working? Any doubt, any queries? Feel free to ask.
And once it is done, kindly confirm in the chat box D for done or Y for yes. So that is how we are going to work. Or if at all any difficulties, do let me know. Okay, so Arun has confirmed. How about others? Okay, great. So all these keyboard shortcuts is listed in our keyboard shortcut list also, nothing to be panic. And no need to make any kind of notes and waste your time just to ensure that one time practice you are doing in the training. Okay, so some basic keyboard shortcuts will learn. Control D to fill down. Control R to fill right and control enter to fill the entire data range. Now we'll go for our question number two, naming called vendor evaluation. So ideally in any industry, wherever you work, our purchase department, what they say, that if you are purchasing a particular product, do not depend upon with a single source of supply and always go for minimum three competitive codes. And we call them technically L1, L2, L3, correct? So in this case, now what we are going to check it out is just check it out price column. And if I ask you what would be my L1 price, L1 means the lowest one. Just check it out manually and tell me. Seventy-four. Seventy-four. Seven, right, seventy-four. L2. 99. 99. L3? 186. 136. 136. So since we have got maximum 7 to 8 items over here, we could generate now L1, L2, L3 like this. No issues. Nothing wrong what we did. Now stay focused. When you open the file in this entire column, suppose you have got 10,000 records. How many? 10,000 records. And if I ask you, Please find out L1, L2, L3 for me. What we do exactly? It will be in descending order or ascending order. Right. We go for smallest to largest order. Uh, basically, we do the sorting. And once we sort our data in top three, whatever that is, the line item appears in the beginning, we consider it as our L1, L2, L3. And we copy the same, paste it in our Outlook email body. We send it across to our superior stating that, sir, we have done the ground level of workings. Kindly approve the same so that we can start procuring the materials. Our boss also saying, yes, I will acknowledge that. Don't worry. First, you get the materials only over here. So this is how we do. Do you all agree? Yes. yes. Right. So nothing wrong. What we are doing is absolutely correct going for sorting the data and again doing all this activity. But imagine today I am looking for ABC product. I have to do one sorting. Tomorrow if my product changes X, Y, Z, again I have to do the sorting. So this sorting is something which is a repetitive in nature. Every time whenever I want to purchase something, I have to go for sorting. This is one. Now take a look. When you go for this, what happens? This sorting task is Anybody's job, anybody could have done that. I could have given this task to one of my subordinate or my teammate, or I could have given this task to one of my office boy. But why being a team leader, being a manager, being a supervisor, I'm taking this responsibility and doing a non-productive task in nature. So we could have improved in our work also, right? But we'd never do that because our people have never objected for this. But going forward, we are not going to do the same. Take a look, imagine, if you have a cell where only the list of products should be there, and whenever you select that cell, whichever the product you want to purchase, if that entire price list would be there over here, our job will become easy. Things will be more dynamic, right? So that is the right way over here to present the data. But how to do that? How to get our L1, L2, L3 over here immediately without doing the manual job? Take a look. First of all, I will select my first cell of bottom three column and then select the rest. 
why we are going and doing this? Because ideally we have a practice to design the formula by creating the formula in one cell. Then we go for dragging it down or selecting control D or double click on the fill handle. All these things we do. So since we are having now the data in this format, let's see how to proceed with it. So first we'll select all the three cells where we want the answer. OK, now immediately go for equal to. And there's a beautiful formula in Microsoft Excel naming called small. The small formula, what it demands me array. Now where is the array in the left side of the formula or right side of the formula? Left side. So go to the left, use the yes. left arrow key to move to the left. Don't take the mouse and try to point or click on that. OK, now select the entire range. Control shift down arrow key. Now here, wait. The moment you want to copy this formula towards down, this range should not move down. So what we're supposed to do in that range, we should lock it. And how to lock it? By using F4. OK, so F4, what it does, it just defines the dollar symbol to the cell reference. Means if you have a cell which actually technically moves from C6 to CD or C6 to C7, or C6 to D6, anything vertical or horizontal, any kind of movement, if it is there, then we should lock this cell if you do not want the movement to happen. Then, come on. Okay, what's next? It is demanding K. Now, what is the meaning by K? K is nothing but integer, number, or constant over here. Now, suppose say I want to give it in contact. Okay, oh, sorry, constant. So how to make it a constant? What is the meaning by constant? Just see. 74L1. Okay. What should be the rank? L1. Rank should be the one. The question itself answer is there. L2. Rank should be two. L3. Rank should be three. The question itself answer is there. We are expecting one, two, three in place of K. But we can't give it together. One, two, three. We cannot give it together. So for that, what we'll need to do, can you see just exactly right side of the formula, we have a cell reference called one, two, three. So this is what the helper column we have already predefined, and we are going to take the helper from that column. So you go and just check on by right or going to the right arrow key to move to the right, rather doing or copying or making any kind of mouse click over there. Just go for right arrow key to press with. So it will be moving your cursor from our current cell to the right side cell. OK, now bracket close formula is ready only with one cell, but we need to apply for rest. What is the shortcut? Control enter. So go for it and immediately you'll be finding all these three values have been populated. So this formula will be very helpful for you whenever you have dashboard designing, summary report design and thing you can make use of that. Check it out. All this working. So anybody is not getting any questions, feel free to ask. Right, so. Vinktesh or not, they have confirmed. How about others? Can you can you just come back again with the formula? Yeah, you have to select everything first, as I told you. Leave your mouse, leave your touchpad, go for equal to small, and then take the array from the left, select everything, and go for locking the same. Why to lock? Because this range should not move down. For that reason, we are locking by hitting F4 key. Then comma 
we need K. So K is nothing but your L1, L2, L3 purpose, one, two, three. So we can't give it together. That's why we have taken the helper column on the left right side and bracket close. Formula is ready only for a cell. Need to apply for rest. Control enter. And that is what we did with small formula. Uh, so what if uh, um, we have a column and we have like 20,000 or 25,000 records and mm -hmm. we just want to, uh, I would say, get uh, whatever values are there uh, in like uh, 1,000 till 1,100, basically 1,000 to 1,100, mm -hmm. whatever records are there that we want to get out of those 25,000 records. Then in mm -hmm. that case, uh what exactly approach we would be taking is it the same one because uh, there we will be obviously mentioning the last row or as the index which is mentioned in the e19 but uh, how so, exactly to filter that out right so in this case what you need to do what you are expecting that is a different story altogether take a look suppose mm -hmm. say you have the data i am just going for it um I can take it. OK, I would like to go for Sunday. Okay, this is not going to take. Hmm. Suppose so this is my some, some data is there in, out of in 100 sheets, I mean, 100 cells. You can consider 100 cells. OK. <laughs> So now from uh, A22, I need to go to 102. So control G, I'll go for A, oh, sorry, B1024. I'm first creating the data, just give me a second. And from there, I'll go for control D. So I have my data. Okay, now I don't know what is there in uh, between 10 to 12 or 10 to 20. I want to receive all the data. So 10 to 20, suppose if I look at from 10 row number 10 to 20, this is my data I'm looking for, correct? If I'm looking for that. Yeah. So how to get it? See, if you want to do that, then you must have each and every cell as an index. So for that, what you need to do, you need to go to next column and there you go and type one. OK, now when you go for it, then you have to drag it towards the entire thing. Yes, you can do. So the best practice equal to this plus one. So you'll be getting this number and then you can double click on the fill handle. OK, now we have got each and every data wise one index. Now what you can do this data once it is ready. Now this is my value. And this is my index. Now you need to apply filter with your index column. So suppose you want 100 to 120. So you should go for between. We have an option over here called between. So you should go for between 101 to 120. So automatically what will be happening based on this column, whatever it is there, the value it will be turning up. Now in this, what is happening? Only one value is there that is called 101 because we do not have 120. Fine, yeah. so I'll do one thing. I'll change the value, suppose 9200. Okay, so if I go for in between 90 and over here, 100. So what will be happening? All the value between 90 to 100 will be populated. So I cannot work in this column directly. I have to take the helper column called index column. So this is how you have to apply. Okay. Hope it is clear. Yeah. Thanks. Right. No problem. All right. So can I explain once again uh, which one, Sudha? We're talking about small formula. Yes, sir. Yeah, small formula. formula is, sir. Yeah, formula. No, that is small formula only. This is the formula we are working. Right. So you have to select all the three cells going to equal to small. Now taking the data from price column, locking the same by using F4 or if it is not your direct key, go with function with F4 comma. To k value one two three we need so we'll be taking the helper column from the right side column column g and then bracket close formula is ready only for a cell 
need to apply for rest. So instead of enter, we should go for control enter. And that's what the small formula. All right. Now, okay. how? Yeah, no problems. Now, sometimes what it happens, friends, just focus on my screen. When you design any kind of formulas on functions, our people, they will demand you, Prabhas, why don't you keep this formula under display mode? How will I know that what kind of formula you are used? Because people don't like going and keeping the cursor in the cell and looking at the formula bar and understanding the formula. People don't like that. So sometimes people may ask you that keep this formula under display the way I'm doing. So what you can do is, I'll tell you, there is a beautiful formula over here called formula text. What is that? Formula text. Just check it out. Formula text. Do you see a formula on your screen? Right now, just relate or just take the cell value reference where the formula is there and the moment you hit enter, it will keep your formula under display mode. So this is how you can make use of this formula text people. Whenever you want to create any template or showcase any formula under display mode, anything you can use formula text. Yes. Yes, any questions from anybody? Yeah, guys. If I enter the wrong formula, so it will display a reflect in the same way, or it will be like any other another brain. For example, if I if I forgot to uh, if, if for example like equal to small, right. if I enter only S M A L single L, so it right. is the same way, or it will be obviously if you have the formula like this. Then what it's saying? <laughs> it is saying name error. Okay. This is the output, but okay. formula is same. Okay. Thank you. Right. No problem. All right. So we have understood how to make use of this small formula. So this formula will be very very helpful whenever you design any kind of dashboard, summary report, tabular report. You can make use of like you can find out bottom five, bottom ten, bottom three. Any point of time you can use that. Now let's go and check it out. How to find my top three value? Like for bottom three, we used small formula for top three. Opposite of small, we have a large formula. We can use that. But I told you the practice. What you need to do first, you select your entire array where you want your solution. Leave your mouse, leave your touchpad and type the formula naming called large. So when you go for large function, what it demands array. So again, array where it is the data in the left or right side of the formula in the left side of the formula. So we can take the entire array right now. Once we have done with this over here, what's next? It demands. Let's discuss. It is again the moment we copy this formula towards down people. We know this range should not move down, so we should lock it. Now, why locking is necessary? Hope you have got the understanding. Whenever you apply the formula for more than one cell, though it is in a column or in a row, locking is very, very essential. So comma, what it need, demands K. What is the meaning by K? As I told you already, number, integer, constant or ranking. Now here, if I take the constant or ranking, L1 rank should be one. L2 rank should be two. That is what we'll take in. Similarly, here also we have to go for T1, T2, T3 purpose, one from the left. Now bracket close, formula is ready only for a cell. Need to apply for rest. What is the shortcut? Control enter and you got your top three values ready. So like small, we have a beautiful formula for large over here. Just check it out, is it working?
you have taken G1, G14. So G14 mm-hmm. will be the numeric one. Yeah. Suppose if I have the hundred numbers in the like serial number one to hundred is there. So I yes. have to keep the first number only as a unique all the time. Your entire number has to be unique. Otherwise, if you have the duplicates, it will be taking the same value no, no, again. Sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. What I have said. Suppose one, two, three. Uh, like I have taken the option like lowest one, low and higher will be one eighty eight. Okay. And lowest will be seventy five. Suppose I have the serial number from one to thirty. Okay. And if I want to apply the formula for smaller, I will use the same way for larger. But you have taken the G fourteen uh, column. Yeah, that is so, what this this column would be containing. This is deciding your ranking. Like out of your ten values, that. out of your ten values, you need top three. So it would be giving you top three value. Then if that for that purpose, you have to use large function. Now second. What you are saying? Okay. What you are saying? You need to always lock the uh, Excel. Like you have to choose the formula with ending with G fourteen. You are saying. Oh, G fourteen contains. Yeah. Suppose if I don't use it. I directly right. close with the bracket, so it will it make any difference, sir? Definitely. How it will know what ranking, which number, which cell value you are looking for? How will know that? Okay. You Without that, the formula okay. is yes, incomplete. Okay. Like we have to compare it. Okay. Your formula is incomplete. So If you do, to... do not do not define anything in G14, so that is what K. If K is missing, then your formula is incomplete. Yes. Right. Yes, I believe it's working for. I I just have yeah. I just have one question. Uh, yeah, we please. have just uh, we have just sorted one two three positions. Now, right. if I want to select one to ten, mm-hmm. top one to ten, what will the formula right. like? I have to I have to type four five six again. Down, yeah, you have to you have to keep keep typing till one to ten. You have to type. Okay. Then you have to drag the formula towards down. Okay. Right. Same thing. Yeah. All right. So I believe. So, my, uh, uh, sir, sir, sorry to interrupt you. I was thinking about something. There was a little confusion in my mind. For example, like Daniel has told me that if one to ten, sir, I have taken the serial number. Okay, sir. And I have told you that you have to lock G14. G14 will be the number one. Uh, numeric will be one. G14 को लॉक नहीं करना है G14 को लॉक मैंने कहां पे किया G14 को लॉक अभी मैंने आपके फार्मूला में लिखा आपने हां यहां पे आपने G14 दिया ना सर लास्ट में और यहां पे स्मॉलर में भी आपने G14 दिया हां G14 में क्या है पहले सोचो G14 में क्या है मेरा रैंकिंग है हां रैंकिंग है यस रैंकिंग है हां मैं इसको लॉक नहीं कर रहा हूं मैं इसको लॉक नहीं कर रहा हूं ओपन रख रहा हूं ओके ताकि मैं जब नीचे फार्मूला पहले समझो पहले समझो नीचे जो फॉर्मूला में कॉपी करूं वन टू को जाना चाहिए जी फोर्टीन जी फिफ्टीन को जाना चाहिए राइट right? तभी तो जाके आएगा ना ओके दस बार वी आर कीपिंग दिस ओपन लेकिन हमने यहां पे लॉक इसलिए किया ये रेंज को लॉक क्यों किया अभी देखो पहले अगर हम लॉक नहीं करते लॉकिंग का अगर आपको इतना प्रॉब्लम है मैं आपको देखो बिना लॉक करके दिखाता हूं क्या होता है सपोज मैंने लॉक नहीं किया ठीक है पहले देखो कुछ करो नहीं पहले देखो वॉट बी हैपनिंग वन एटी एट आई गॉट माई टी वन सेकेंड टॉप वैल्यू कौन सा है वन एटी एट के बाद वन फिफ्टी थ्री आई गॉट इट ओके उसके बाद क्या है वन थर्टी एट यहाँ पे ऐसा है आ गया अगर मान लो वन थर्टी एट यहाँ पे होता सेवेंटी फोर जगह पे वन थर्टी एट होता मान लो मैं यहाँ पे चेंज करो वन थर्टी एट तो ये कौन सा लेता है वो भी यहाँ पे थोड़ा देख लेते हैं यहाँ पे सेवेंटी फोर ठीक है क्या हुआ 99 लिया राइट right? क्यों लिया क्योंकि जब आप फॉर्मूला नीचे कॉपी करते हो ये ब्लू कलर बॉर्डर भी नीचे जा रहा है कैन यू सी दैट इट इज गोइंग बियॉन्ड सर वही मैं बोल रहा था आपको फॉर एग्जांपल हां सर वही मैं बोल रहा था कि समझो फॉर एग्जांपल मेरे पास 30 नंबर्स है जिसमें मेरे को लोअर एंड ग्रेटर निकालना है फॉर एग्जांपल लोअर तो मैंने निकाल लिया और फिर ग्रेटर भी निकालना है जब मैं ग्रेटर लेता हूं तो आपको मैं वो वापस वो एक नंबर को ही लगाना है मतलब जी 14 जो लिया आपने तो I have to close the formula with G14 only, no? मतलब एक नंबर पे क्लोज करना है ना मेरे को ब्रैकेट क्लोज राइट कोई मुझे सवाल था सर वही समझ में नहीं आया कि आपने यहां पे भी G14 लिया यहां पे भी G14 लिया बट इफ आई हैव अ नंबर ऑफ 1 टू 100 सुनो सुनो हां सिंपल सा सवाल है अभी नीचे से गिनती करो 1 2 3 ऊपर से गिनती करो 1 2 3 नीचे से गिनती करोगे तो क्या होगा 
लोएस्ट वैल्यू का गिनती होगा तो वाइस वर्षा होगा सिंपल तो यहाँ पे एक एक वैल्यू को पकड़ो दिस इज योर लोएस्ट वैल्यू ओवर हियर वॉट वी है ठीक so this will be helpful for your template purpose like tomorrow when you check any of the product automatically those values of l1 l2 l3 or t1 t2 t3 automatically will be popping up so basically the objective is instead of doing repeated sorting just keep your formula ready and whenever you do the changes in the product the value will be populated hope it is clear now all right so i believe now we all are clear with the formulas whatever we have discussed like small large with combination of our this logic called our f4 to lock the cells why you need to lock the cells we got that clarity now take a look on my screen again suppose say this is what i have created and i have presented to my boss my boss is watching the data and no need to do anything just watch my screen he is fine with everything but he has a confusion why prabhas has taken this 1 2 3 why prabhas has taken 1 2 3 and he has deleted the same so what happens you can notice entire formula is in trouble so this is what mostly happens with us we design something we send it across to our superiors or people or vendor or customer they play around with the functions of formula then again they keep troubling us by over call or phone call or email that what while you have send it across it is not working do you agree with me have you come across this kind of scenario yes so now in this situation what you have understood what we have designed over here taking the formula or functions help people our expert suggest us to do the job like this but microsoft excel never recommends for that so microsoft excel never recommends for taking any kind of helper column because the more the helper column you use again file size will be huge the more the unwanted data you use again the file size will be huge so having said this this is not the right practice what we did so how to make an improvement just see watch my screen first those 1 2 3 we need without that it is not possible to design the formula or solution but what we are going to do we are going to make our formula efficient enough in such a way it will generate those 1 2 3 in the formula itself but how take a look suppose say take an example if i go for over here and ask you which row i am operating with what will be your answer you will be look at immediately my row header and it shows me 14 so you will be your answer will be 14 yes now if i ask excel to just check and give me the result excel will be taking a help of a formula row so row open bracket and close bracket this is the formula whose basic job is to return the answer as a row number so can you see we are in row number 14 that's why this returns the answer as 14 this is the only job of this row formula nothing else whichever the row you type it will be giving you that row number as the answer but our k purpose what is the first number we were expecting 1 already 14 we have received but we are expecting one basic mathematics what we can do minus 13 so i got one and the same i can apply for others control d to fill down we know so this formula what we have designed outside of the formula range we are going to incorporate in top 3 column so how to do that just watch my screen for a minute observe what i'm doing next one minute i'll be giving time to try first look at my screen as we develop the practice first we'll select all the three cells we'll go for equal to large 
then array is nothing but over here the entire price column. This should not move, so we'll lock it by hitting F4. Come on, now it is asking K. So K purpose we need one, two, three. So we launched a formula called row open bracket and close bracket. Now since I'm in row number 14, this is going to give me the answer called 14. So what I can do minus 13. OK, now last formula bracket close formula is ready only for a cell need to apply for rest. What is the shortcut control enter and we got the records without taking any kind of helper column. So this is called nothing but people your nested formula or nested functions. Give it a try and check it's working. So, sir, can you repeat it again? Because I didn't get it what exactly it was. See, one, two, three was there. My boss has deleted them. So, formula was in trouble. If you look at formula is in trouble. That's why we have gone for this formula called row. So, without taking any kind of helper column, we are going to use the row function. So when I go for row function, what it returns me since I'm in row number 14, is it giving me 14? Can you see? Yes, I put 14. Yes, 14. Right. But earlier what it was, what is the number it was? I'm highlighting the cell. What was the number over there? It was one. Right. So it's now 14 I have received, but I'm expecting one. What I can do basic mathematics minus 13. Right. 13 minus 1, no? It will be 13. 14, 14 minus 13, because we are expecting 1. We are expecting 1. Right. Now the okay. same we can apply for others. So 1, 2, 3, what we have got it over here. Now we are generating by using a formula like this. Now the same formula, we are going to apply the formula over here inside this large. So I'll go for large function, taking the array, locking the same, comma, row function now this row formula if you look at it is going to generate row number 14 what i'm expecting one so minus 13 i should do now bracket close formula is ready only for a cell need to apply for rest control enter and this is what your nested formula when you write multiple formula in one cell that becomes your nested formula Check if it is working. Kindly confirm in the chat box Y for yes or D for done or any queries. Feel free to ask. All right, so now it's confirmed. How about others? Please help me out if it is clear. Just a message. We put done or wait for yes. So top three by using large with row combination, we have rectified our formula and got the answer. So let's go for rectifying our bottom three also. So what we can do equal to small taking the array locking the same comma over here. Again, we should use row formula because we need one, two, three. So minus 13 because we are in row number 14. 
Now bracket close formula is ready only for a cell need to apply for rest. We know what is the shortcut control enter. So large with row, small with row. Hope the concept is clear. This is going to be very, very helpful in our routine activities, people. So taking the live data, you can keep practicing even also. All right, so if you are good with this, shall we go to the next example? All right, now take a look. We have a prices column. OK, now in this prices column, if you look at the data is of mixed type, like we have got positive, we have got negative also. Now looking at the same, my boss is not happy. What he's saying, Prabhas, I just don't want to see the negatives. Just get me the positive values alone in the next column. So looking at the data, how do you find something negative? We know if it starts with bracket, or if it's starting with a hyphen or dash symbol, this is negative. If none of them is available, it's a positive one, simple rule. If I ask you, please logically find out whether the value is positive or negative, what you do? We go to each and every cell from the prices column and we'll check if it is greater than zero, then positive. If it is less than zero, then negative, simple logic. Same thing, we are going to do it in Excel. So when you want to do the same job in Excel with any kind of logical calculation, we have to depend upon a formula called if. First you see on my screen, observe. Next one minute, I'll be giving time to try. Don't worry, first understand the concept. So what it's saying, logical test. So logical test is nothing but we need to depend upon a cell which is there in my left. Now, what kind of test we want to do in that cell? Is it greater than zero? So this entire setup becomes my logical test. Now, when I do the test, there might be a success, there might be a failure, but we need to follow the rhythm and it is asking value if true. That is called if the test result is success. So it means this value is greater than zero. So this greater than zero means it becomes positive. So in next column, which value we are expecting? Nothing but the same value we are expecting. Yeah, come on. Now what's next? Value if false. So if this value is not greater than zero, it means definitely less than zero. If it is less than zero, then it becomes negative. If it becomes negative, boss doesn't want in that next column, but next column, there should be some treatment we should give. What is that? Zero, hyphen, nil, not available, not applicable, anything you want to define. You must define within two double inverted quotes, but we are working in a template, so template has to remain blank, and blank purpose, two immediate double inverted quotes only without space. So here people always commit a mistake. They define to double inverted quotes, but they define a space in between that, and that is really killing. So you have to be very careful whenever you want to define the formula output as blank to immediate double inverted quotes. Don't go for a single quote four times also. That will be having a different meaning. So formula is ready only for a cell. Need to apply for rest. We know the shortcut, control, enter. And this is how people 
any point of time, if you happen to segregate your data, you can make use of the formula over here called if. Check it out. Is it working? Okay, so is it clear whatever we did? Any doubt, any queries from anybody? Yes or no? It's a simple logical calculation just to find out wherever the value is positive, we have to express it in the next column. Okay, so we can take the entire array going for equal to if formula for any kind of logical calculation, taking the data over here, then greater than zero. If it is true then value if true what is that we are looking for if this value is greater than zero it means it becomes positive so in the next column which value you are expecting the value which you are checking hope it is clear to the state yes no now yes once this is done then it demands me value if false so if this value is not greater, because we don't know this value now, suppose it is not visible. I don't know what is the value to be tomorrow. So if at all this is not greater than zero, then definitely it is less than zero. If it is less than zero, means it becomes negative. If it becomes negative, then it should not appear in the next column. But there should be some treatment in the next column. What kind of treatment? Zero, hyphen, nil, not available. Anything you want to write over there, you must go for within two double inverted quotes and that's what i told you when you want to retain your cell output as blank you must go for within two double inverted quotes that's it no space so this is the place where people commit a mistake you don't write any space in between two double inverted quotes now formula is ready only for a cell need to apply for rest control enter and this is what we did Any difficulties, anybody so far? No. Great. So now, considering that everyone is clear with our if logic, how to apply it, okay? Please watch my screen. Don't do anything else. Now, this is what, no doubt, it looks good. We got the answer. You must be happy also. But this is what our experts suggest us to do the job like this. But I do not recommend over here in this scenario, I do not recommend this formula. The reason is, remember one thing, in any Excel file, the more the if formula, file size will be more. I repeat, the more the if formula, file size will be more. So this is the reason why. In this particular case, if formula should not be your right choice. Then now the question arises, how to keep my formula crisp? How to get my answer with limited characters of my formula? Or what would be the replacement for this if over here? Let's see. So we have an alternative column. We can go and type equal to, just watch my screen for a minute. I'll go for a max formula. We know max formula, what it does, it finds out the maximum value in a range. So we are going to do the same, but what it demands, number one. So what is the meaning by number one? Prices column, first value, okay, comma. Number two, so which number you want to check again? If you remember, 
when I asked you to logically check the value is whether positive or negative, which value we compare with? We compare with zero. So number two is nothing but zero bracket close. Now what you're trying to do, just try to understand. We are commanding to Excel that between the price column value and zero, which is more that you return. So we are not discussing anything below zero cases over here, correct? So in this case, formula is ready only for a cell. Need to apply for rest. What is the shortcut? Control enter and we got the records over here. So this is how people whenever there is a need how to present our data over there by segregating the records. We got the basic understanding. Now you tell me when you are presenting the same to the people, which one people prefer to see option one or option two? Option two looks better. Definitely, because nobody is interested to see your lengthy formulas. So try this and confirm if it is working. Hope this logic is clear. Any doubt, any queries, feel free to ask. Yes, Nandini, what we are trying to do is we are trying to compare by using the max formula. So max formula, what it does, it always takes the range and we are doing the operation. But now if you look at the formula, it asks for number one, come on, number two, number three, like that it is asking. So I can go and type number one, come on, number two, come on, number three, something like that. So instead of typing it, what I'm saying is taking this number from the prices column, and we are trying to compare with number two that is called zero. OK, now in between these two, zero and this number, which is more. Definitely this value, correct? So this is going to return over here. Now when it formula goes down between 99.20, that is which is negative already and zero, which is more definitely zero because negatives are nothing but it is below zero values, right? So we are not going to just check the below zero value cases over here and formula becomes very simple and control enter and that is what it is giving the result to us. OK. Fine, so I believe all are clear with whatever we did, the operation of data segregation. This will be very, very helpful whenever your data is of mixed type, like when you see the customer's balances or vendor's balances, or when you see the bank statements when you download the data from your internet portal or something, or whenever you have your sales data growth, degrowth is there, and you want to segregate basically positive and negative value, this formula will be very, very helpful. Similarly, for positive values, we have used max. For negative value, if you want to see only negatives, what you can do, the opposite logic is equal to min and taking the data over here, comma zero. Again, the same logic. Now you see, so when you combine these two columns, that is nothing but this prices column. Very simple logic. Instead of doing the things manually, you can always use the formula handle. Any difficulties? Anybody?
right now. Once we have done with this, let's go to our next example. <clears throat> so here, sometimes what it happens, friends, we face some date related challenges in our routine activities. Focus with the ask or the problem statement. Say, we started working with a project on 1st Feb 2019. And the project is over on 26 April 2020. And in that particular project, we are not working in Thursday. We are not working in Thursday, but rest of six days we are coming to office and we are working on the project. And these are the list of holidays which you have never worked in that project. Having said this, now suppose my boss asked me from us how many days exactly you worked on that project. So let me know so that I can make the billing to the customer accordingly. Well, so we need to calculate the business days or working days. What we can do, there is a beautiful form naming called Network Days International. So INTL stands for international. Now, what it asked me, start date. So where is the start date? In the left side of the formula, obviously. So use the left arrow key to move to the start date, comma. Now it is asking end date. So end it again in the left side of the formula. Though I have taken start date, but when I boot comma, I, I'm again coming back to my formula only. So end date is my left side of the formula. So I should use again the left arrow key, comma. It will be giving you a small pop up. So as per the question, what is the date we are not working Thursday? So we need to just select the option where Thursday only is written. Right now immediately it will be giving a declaration to your right side that Thursday is a weekend day. And there is also a formula number assigned over here for Thursday naming called 15. So you can write one five manually or you can double click on Thursday only automatically that 15 as a weekend added. Now comma. What is the next thing it is asking? Holidays. So holidays is there in the right side of my formula. So I should use the right arrow key. I have reached to my first holiday, but I need to select the entire range. Control shift down arrow key. Now immediately you can see it will be giving me the answer. So this is nothing but my entire <coughs> business days between these two set of dates. So this will be very, very helpful whenever you want to compute someone's efficiency, productivity, or if you have hired some machinery on rental basis, how many days exactly it has been put to use if you want to pay accordingly, this formula is going to help you a lot. Give it a try and check it's working. Any doubt, feel free to ask. Can this come back with this? Sorry. Can you please come back with the formula? Yeah, formula is already written there. Network days international. Uh -huh. So type equal right. to network days international. Start date right. and then my left comma end date okay. again in my left comma okay. Thursday only. You have to select where Thursday only is there. But to get this in the formula, double click on the same. So 15 will be assigned to the formula. So 15 is nothing but your Thursday. This is predefined. Now it is asking holidays. So holidays is there in my right side and I have to take the entire range and hit enter. So it will be giving you 381. Okay. So uh, sir, I need to confirm that like when we enter the formula after selecting Thursday, so automatically we will get the Thursday date, no? Uh, the right side, holiday days. No, no, no. Please, please be slow while you are asking. What is that? I'm sorry. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying like when we select the formula, uh, network like next work, uh, work days dot international whole area. I mean, then I have the formula left side or right side. So left side, the date is 2019. Or right side, uh, 2022. 2020. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you already said here. So this time I double click on Thursday. So this are the Thursdays, na? 18 yeah, March. Thursday. No, no, no. Thursday, your weekend is. I mean, you do not work on Thursday. In the week, you do not work on Thursday. You do not work on the rest of the week. That's why we give the parameter of weekend day. If you have a Saturday Sunday, then you have two days. So, what is the option for Saturday Sunday? So, if you can see what is the option for the first option. You can see it here. Saturday and Sunday. That combination is one. One night, okay. Ah, so, you can do it. Right. Right. Okay. 
तो अगर डबल अगर कोई है तो वीकेंड आते हैं सैटरडे संडे तो वो आएगा और अगर थर्सडे अगर थर्सडे फ्राइडे सैटरडे आता है तो ओनली वन डे वन डे विल बी लेना पड़ेगा वो वीक डे का तो ऐसा अभी मान चलो यहाँ पे अगर देखोगे देखो सिंपल लॉजिक है अगर वन टू वन टू सेवन देखोगे सीरियल नंबर वन टू सेवन तो ये yes, दो दिनों का कॉम्बिनेशन देता है अगर हाँ अगर इलेवन टू सेवनटीन देखोगे ये सिर्फ सिंगल डे का वीकेंड डेटा देता है ओके यस अगर सर इसमें एक बात पूछा मैं देखो जो अगर मैंने आगे आप बोल रहे कि सैटरडे संडे भी आ गया फॉर एग्जांपल बंदा को थर्सडे नहीं आया था बाद में फिर बाद में उसके बाद वो आठ दस दिन छुट्टी पे चले गया तो वो कैसा करेंगे सर वो डे अगर कैसा कैलकुलेट करेंगे तो वो आपको एक्स्ट्रा टू डेज अगर मान लो तो वो दो दिन आपको अलग सा बाद में ऐड करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि यू शुड हैव ए कंसिस्टेंट डेट सपोज ये वीक में मैं थर्सडे में नहीं आया नेक्स्ट वीक में मैं संडे में नहीं आया तो फिर एक्सेल को पता कैसे चलेगा सो यू शुड हैव सम कंसिस्टेंसी फॉर दैट एंड इफ यू नो समथिंग इज हैपन लाइक दैट तो आपको बाद में ये जो थ्री आया उसमें दो दिन और एड करना है अगर ये सिर्फ दो ही दिनों की बात है जितने दिन ऐसे वो इनकन्सिस्टेंट है उसी को आपको बाद में ऐड करना पड़ेगा बिकॉज एक्सेल डजेंट हैव सच काइंड ऑफ फंक्शंस इट विल ऑटोमेटिकली डिटेक्ट अबाउट इट ओके और सर अगर फॉर एग्जांपल अगर वो पूरे साल भर में 6 महीने आता है और 1 महीने मतलब 7वें महीने में 15 दिन नहीं है देन ही कम्स लाइक फॉर 3 मंथ्स मोर कि 10वें महीने में और 10 दिन नहीं आता तो उसका कैसा करेंगे सर उसका फॉर्मूला क्या रहेगा जो 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 दिन नहीं आया उसको यहां पे हॉलिडे लिस्ट में डाल दो ओके हॉलिडे लिस्ट में डाल देता हूं मतलब मान लो उसने लीव लिया या पीएल हुआ है सीएल हुआ है जो भी है उसका तो यू कैन ऐड दोस थिंग्स दोस डेट्स इन द हॉलिडे लिस्ट सो हॉलिडे लिस्ट पब्लिक हॉलिडे के साथ साथ उसका लीव भी यहां पे ऐड हो जाएगा और वो ऑटोमेटिक यहां पे बिजनेस डे से निकल जाएगा राइट ऑल राइट सो आई बिलीव ऑल आर क्लियर विद आवर नेटवर्क दिस इंटरनेशनल पीपल एनी डाउट एनी क्वेरीज फ्रॉम एनीबॉडी great now let us go for one more example which is again coming up it's a beautiful one just stay focused see suppose we are furnishing the aims excuse me sir yeah so can you explain that after 15 um, formula after 15 then sir yeah. right after 15 means it is asking holidays right formula read the formula what it demands holidays so holidays it is there in my right side of the formula so i cannot yes, click sir. now if i go and click i can't click it because the yes. formula is extending over so you can go towards the right side and then come back towards the left and then select the entire list of holidays or you can manually also type f36 to f41 like this and that you have to include over here so that it will automatically eliminate the holidays list and it will be giving you net business working days Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you. No problem. All right. So now let's go for the next example, people. We furnish our regular activities, the AMC's annual maintenance contracts, right? Take a look. Suppose say 11th, 20, December 2021, we furnished one contract for HP printer. Now that HP printer warranty is of 16 months, assume. now we need to find out when this contract is going to be expired so like this there are 10000 cases are there and i am the sole owner of the all the amcs of my xyz organization so if that is the case then how to compute it just check the manual one the very first one check it manually and tell me what would be the date of expiry anybody Yes. Anybody? Eleventh April two thousand twenty-two. Two thousand twenty-two. Are you sure? Two thousand twenty-two. Oh, because of sixteen months. Twenty. It's twenty-three. Yeah, it should be twenty-three because already twenty twenty-one is there after twelve months. 
it will be automatically 11 december 2022 after that four months Jan, yes, yes, April, march, April, march, so march. Ideally, yes so ideally it should be 11th april 2023 correct Right. So this is what the see for a particular case to check it out and find the right answer. We took this much of time. So we have 10,000 cases. What do you believe? Can I hold a calendar in one hand and keep computing? Is this the right procedure? Is it the right way I should do the job? No way. No. But we know one thing. Whenever there is a date related questions are there, we have to be very pinpoint accurate about that. We can't say that there is a plus or minus of one day. It's OK. No, that's not an acceptable. OK, so in this kind of scenario, people, how to deal with it? I'll tell you very right? beautiful option we have. See, first one minute, watch my screen. I'll be taking the entire solution area. I'll go for a beautiful formula in our Microsoft Excel naming called E date. E stands for electronic. Then it demands me start date. I will take date of AMC. Then it demands me months. So month is there in my left side. Yes, I took it. Now formula is ready only for a cell. Need to apply for rest. Control enter. I could see some data is coming up. What is that data? Data is nothing but it's a general format of my data. What is that? general format but what we are expecting we are expecting the date format so how to convert any format to date format see any point of time if you happen to convert any format to date format see in our numerical keypad there is a number three one key is there which is having the hash key symbol so go for control shift and three control shift and three to press together to convert any format to date format so you no need to go for right click format cell going to date and doing the changes and wasting your time. You can simply go for a keyboard shortcut and check all the places. Even though you have 10,000 one lakh cases, you could find out easily the date of expiry. Give it a try and check. Is it working? E date. E stands for electronic date. Uh, Prabhat, can you um, just say miss a shortcut? Yeah, yeah. Control Shift 3. If you go to your keyboard, Control Shift and 3, this hash key numerical key 3, you have to press together all these three. Control Shift 3. Uh, so, one question is, if you have a formula, you have a formula, formula <laughs> लगता नहीं मतलब क्या होता है? For example, समझो अगर मैंने लगा दिया, for example, अभी जैसा आपने बताया, equal to e date, और उसके बाद मैंने bracket set कर दिया, आपने ऊपर highlight किया, तभी अभी क्या होता है सर? कि वो formula लगाने बाद भी वो series match नहीं होती कभी, कभी कभी वो वैसे ही रह जाता है, या तो फिर उसमें कुछ आता नहीं, फिर वो text column करना पड़ता है। Right. हाँ वो जरूरी है अगर आप SAP से कुछ डाउनलोड किए वही फाइल में काम कर रहे हैं कभी-कभी ऐसा होगा तो आपको टेक्स्ट टू कॉलम ही करना पड़ेगा और कोई ऑप्शन नहीं है अगर फॉर एग्जांपल CSV फाइल है मेरे पास और 2007 का मेरा एक्सेल फाइल है तो उसमें कभी भी फॉर्मूला लगता नहीं सर नहीं नहीं वही तो मैं बोल रहा हूं ना कि वो सो फाइल जो हम सिस्टम से डाउनलोड करते हैं एप्लीकेशन से डाउनलोड okay. करते हैं तो ये सब प्रॉब्लम्स आपको आएंगे ही आएंगे आपको और कोई ऑप्शन ही नहीं है यू हैव टू डू टेक्स्ट टू कॉलम द टेक्स्ट टू कॉलम और आई शुड कंसीडर द सेम फाइल व्हिच इज देयर 2007 एनीथिंग 2007 हो 10 हो in 2013 also if you generate it will be the problem because see that is nothing to do with the version that is to deal with your application application in the sense sap erp ibm erp oracle erp dot csb tally erp when you download job download karte ho, output kuch aisa excel mein report export karte ho to yes of problems right. upon again all right so i believe edit is clear this is very very useful people whenever you are maintaining any files related to your contracts claims agreements or if you have bank guarantees or if you have investment related documents so in those cases if you want to maintain excel as excel tracker you can make use of these formulas and that will be helping a lot so edit and control shift 3 hope it is clear Now, 
take a look. Though we have I, I, I just uh, can I interrupt you? Yeah, yeah, please. I just wanted to confirm the date format. What you have taken? Yeah. While calculating. Yes. Right? Uh, it is like suppose for example first Feb 2018. Mm -hmm. So what it's everything is in numerical. I'm not getting that. No, no, you are not getting now. Now in this table, you have mentioned 11, 12, 2021, right? Okay. What if there is an uh, uh, the date is first Feb F E B mm -hmm. dash 2018. Not, not a problem. Not a problem. Uh -huh. See, not a problem. See, now I have changed this to 11 December 2021. Correct. This is not giving an impact. See, ideally date format, how it is supposed to be either DD, MM, YY, YY or MM, DD, YY, YY. These are the two formats across the globe we follow. Do you agree? Perfect. Right. But the moment it comes to separator, we must use the separator as hyphen or dash symbol. Else mm -hmm. we can go for the separator as slash that to forward slash we can use it. So these are recognized as a proper date format. Now here DD MM YY. So month will come as an integer, but if you want as a text, you should go for another 3M. It will be giving you first three characters of the month name. That is what we have over here, DEC. Now if I go for another M over here, then it will be giving you entire December. Now suppose if I go for right click and I go for format cells over here, Okay. Now in this form ourselves, can you see three M? It is showing. Perfect. Yes. I'll go for one more M. Can you see in the sample data? Is it showing December completely? That's right. 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 So this is what the formatting one. So ideally, the source is date only. But this is for window dressing of your data. You keep changing for your convenience. So why only oh. first three characters? Because that is easy to understand, easy to express. No need to. Enhance the character length and making your file size heavy. That's why when you go for Control Shift 3, this is the ideal format Microsoft Excel suggests. Okay. Right. So, since here the formula like, for example, if it is 11 uh, 0 to 23, now it is alphabetical. So how to change it? Oh, if you want to bring it again, number, select everything, go for right click and format cell over here. And then you will be getting this custom where you can see M three times is there. You can remove yeah. one M and you can see the sample data. Is it showing month in terms of number or integer? Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, no problem. All right, so I believe now we all are clear with our EDATE application, correct? But that alone is not enough. See, though we got our expiry date perfectly all right, absolutely clear, but those expiry dates are going to fall in weekday or weekend. That is also very essential to know because if you are not working in the weekend and something goes wrong in that weekend day yourself, the entire repairs and maintenance cost you have to bear because your vendor is not going to bear. He will throw your paper to you saying that since you have not renewed the contract, that's not my problem. OK, so that's the reason why people hear one more risk factor is we need to find out the day from a date. So how to find out that? First, watch my screen. Any point of time to extract a day from a date, you must use a formula called text. What it demands me? Value. Value is nothing but date of expiry. Comma. Format text. I told you what is the standard format of our date? DD, MM, YY, or MM, DD, YY, where D plays the role of day, M stands for month, Y stands for year. So our focus is not with the month and year. Our focus is only with the day. So we should write within two double inverted quotes D four times. Now why D four times to get the complete string of the day name? If you want to go for only first three characters, S-U-N, M-O-N, then you should go for three Ds. So this is what the significance of three Ds or four Ds. Now is it case sensitive? No, Excel formulas are not case sensitive. You can write with caps on or drop caps. No problem. It is going to give the result to you. 
since formula is ready only with one cell need to apply for rest we know the shortcut what was that control enter and see as we know so this entire things is always falling in the weakness so we are safe so this is how people you are always take this formula help to generate some data all right give it a try and check it's working What are the shortcuts for uh, copying the whole row? Copying the whole row. Control yeah, the... shift space bar, shift space bar to block the row. Then control C. Yeah, Hope it is working. Kindly confirm. So we have identified day out of a date. So let's go for a hands-on practice for finding the month and year as well. So month purpose, what we can do, same text formula, but we have to go for formal text purpose, M four times, because we are looking for the month. And why four times M? To get the complete string or name of the month, right? Similarly, for a year, what we can do? Four time Y. We can use that, but don't use it. Reason is, text is a lengthy formula. So day and month purpose, we do not have any other choice. That's why we are depending upon this text. But year purpose, we can go for a ready-made year formula in Excel, which will be making my formula very crisp and data processing also will be very faster. So equal to year, since it is demanding serial number, I can take the data of expiry date. Bracket close, control enter, and we got the record. See how the formulas become so crisp. So this kind of formula will be very, very helpful whenever you download the data from SAP or ERP. You may be probably having only one column called date, purchase order date, work order date, date of invoice, date of joining, date of leaving, anything, whatever. Then in those cases, if you want to analyze the data year wise, month wise, anything you want to do, then again, you have to generate those columns and there this formula is going to help you. So this is the story of our business maths. Any doubt, any queries in business maths people, anybody? Sir, I have a question. Please ask. Uh, suppose uh, how how we can calculate the uh, how many days remaining to expire expiry that AMC. Simple. Suppose this is your expiry date. You want to calculate equal to today. Open bracket, close bracket. It will be generating today's date from your system. 
whenever you open the file minus your expiry date. OK, so what will be happening? This will be giving you a date, but we are expecting the number so we can convert the data into general. So what is happening now? If you look at over here, this is 375 days from today's date. If you look at this is already expired. Now it is showing positive. Now if you want to know, suppose it is it already expired, then it showed me as negative data. Why it is showing positive? Then you can simply interchange the formula. What is that? From this expiry date, you may remove this today. OK. OK. Now it will be giving you the data over here and minus 375. And if it is showing minus, you should go for the number format format cell and go to number and go for this. So when this is a negative, it should show in a proper negative format. Now the same you can apply for others. So what is happening? All these values have already expired. OK, OK, right. I understand. Right now, suppose I take an example. If you want to still check, suppose today I'm going for or going for today's date. Today I furnished one contract. 16 months is the warranty. So date is coming up over here. You can you could see. Yes. Now it is mm -hmm. yet to be expired. So 487, it is still there to get it expired. But rest of things uh, are already expired. Is the is there any colored option? Those are those value is in positive. These are green and those values are in red, uh, negative and that are showing as a red. So yeah, is there you any can. option? Yes, you can do that. Suppose I take an example in our case over here. We can take it wherever it is negative. It should be colored red. So I can go to home tab conditional formatting over here and in this conditional formatting. If I go for highlight cell rules less than can you see one option? So when I go for less than now less than zero means negative, so it should be red. So I should go for this drop down custom format and I can choose the color as red. So automatically this format will be applied over here. So wherever it is below zero cases, it is red. OK, understand, right. sir. Thank you. Yeah, similarly, no problem. So similarly, if you want green, same option, but you have to go for greater than conditional. Greater format than, yes, greater than, that's greater, it. Than, greater than zero, then it will be green. Right, absolutely. So this is how simple logical formatting. You can go for conditional formatting and you can apply. All right, so I believe all are clear with the formulas, whatever we discussed, like large, small, with row combination, if, max, and mean formula, then network disk international, e date, text, year formula, and the keyboard shortcut to convert any format to date, control shift three. All these things we are clear. Okay, kindly save all your files. So with this, we'll go for a short break of uh, 10 minutes. So in my system, four o'clock dot 410 will be catching up. So have a brisk and come back soon. We'll discuss the rest. Remaining value formula. I did not get you. Nalini, could you please unmute and speak? What is that your question? So what is that remaining value? Which formula you are talking about? This formula you are talking about, I guess. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, you can check it out. All right, people, so please go for a break. Come back soon and we'll discuss the rest.
பண்றீங்களா sorry yes my dad okay let me start begin again hope now i am audible sunil venkatesh yes, yes yes okay so before break we discussed about business mass we are done with that now we'll go and proceed working with our data presentation okay so what i'm trying to say over here is in our data driven world mere having the data alone is not enough we have to do a lot of exercise in our data. So let's see now whenever you create some data or prepare some data, how to make it more informative. So what kind of additional columns we can add it over here to make our data more informative? We are going to discuss. So first of all, if you look at in our data, we do not have a total. So keep your cursor in the total cell. Keep your cursor in the total cell and then press alt equal to press together so when you press alt equal to can you see a sum formula immediately being applied so this is going to give me a total of 33715 check have you received the same total kindly confirm
All right, can you please confirm? Are you getting the same total? 33,715, when you press Alt equal to? Yes, sir. Right, now once we have this, as I told you, this revenue column may be in billions, millions, lakhs, crores, our immediate boss would be happy watching the same. But the data, when it goes to the management level, they are really not worried about our billions, millions. They want to see the revenue data, but it has to be in percentage. So now our next objective is we need to create a new column naming called revenue percentage. Kindly create that. Now, what would be the formula? Just see. Equal to taking the data from left. First watch my screen for a minute. I'll be doing the same. Then you can watch and you can also work on the same on your screen. Don't worry, I'll be giving time. First, observe the things and understand the concept. This data should be divided by the total revenue. Then only we can present our data in percentage. But when I copy this formula towards down, only revenue sales should move one by one down, like Jan to Feb, Feb to March. But it has to always divide by total revenue only. But how to do that? We should go for locking the same by hitting F4. Now, when I go for F4 and hit enter, this gives me the answer in terms of decimals. Now, we are expecting the answer in terms of percentage. Remember one thing, any point of time to convert any format to percentage. See, in our numerical five button, can you see one percentage symbol is there? So you have to use Control Shift 5. I repeat, Control Shift 5 to convert any format to percentage. So when I go over here, is it changing the format to percentage? Yes. Now the same we can apply for others. Double click on the fill handle, the drag button double click. Now we can go for a total and we got the answer over here as 100%. So this is how people, we got another column ready, naming called our revenue percentage. Can you try this and confirm? Is it working? Yes. So to remove the percentage, we have to calculate, first we have to do the total. Once the total is there, then we have to calculate by month-wise and then the total. Just saying yeah, it this month, way now. Month-wise value should be divided by the total value. And if you want to, if you want to go by month wise, how, how can we can do that? Like uh, for the month of January, we are in growth and February, we are in growth. January, what is that? So I'm saying, for example, like we got the total against the total, the growth we got uh, against the value, against the month wise. How many uh, like percentage we have increased? 12%, 7%, 8% as in the total value. That will see, that will see, don't worry. We'll, we are going one step, one step by step. So since okay. we have the data in terms of values, this is an add-on we are giving, presenting our data in percentage. So this is what we have done so far. We'll deal that to what you're expecting. It will coming up, don't worry. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Kindly confirm all of you have got this. Our revenue percentage column as 100%. Now, once we have done with this, what's next we can do? See, we can compare our data, Jan to Feb, Feb to March, March to April, all these things. What do you call that column? We call it as a growth. We call it as a growth. Now, what would be the formula for growth calculation? Just watch my screen. First, try to understand the subject. 
since Jan is the first month of my business year, since I'm following the calendar year, is there anything before Jan we have? Before Jan we have to compare? No. So ideally growth for the month of Jan is nil, but we don't need to go and define zero over there. This is a self-implied. Anybody can understand that Jan month is growth is nil. But when you go to Feb, we have got something to compare with. Can you see? So what would be the formula for Feb growth calculation? Equal to taking the Feb month value minus Jan month. Basic mathematics again. And now when you look at from Jan to Feb, my volume is going down. So same formula I can apply for others. Double click on the fill handle and I call my growth column ready. Give it a try and confirm. Which one to explain, Nandini? See, growth column is nothing but each and every month wise you have to compare your data. So here, since Jan is the first month, we have nothing before Jan to compare. Do you agree? So that's why we have to start comparing our data from Feb. So Jan month growth is over here nil because we have nothing before Jan to compare. But when you go to Feb month, when you go to Feb month, we have got something to compare now. So what should be the formula equal to Feb month, whatever the revenue we have generated minus Jan month revenue. So it will be automatically take your data to minus 175. Now, if you look at Jan to Feb, the volume is going down. That's why it is showing negative value. Now same we can apply for others and we got the answer. So this is how we got another column ready naming called growth. Uh, sir, do we have any shortcut instead of applying formula for that sum value which you have mentioned? Alt equal to. Alt equals. Yes. All right, so now growth column is ready. Now growth, maybe in billions, millions, lakhs, crores, we can present it and my boss would be happy watching the same. All right, but the same data, when it goes to the management level, they are not expecting the data in growth in billions, millions or lakhs and crores. They want to see growth, but that should be in terms of percentage. So now we are going to see how to present our growth percentage column. Take a look over here. As we discussed, since Jan is the first month, whatever the Jan month growth, that should be definitely growth percentage also will be nil. Since growth is nil, the growth percentage also will be nil. But when you go to Feb, what would be the formula? See, whatever the growth we have identified in the month of Feb should be divided by the base month. So for Feb, which is the base? Base is the January. That's it. Now this is going to give me a result in terms of decimals and we are expecting the answer in terms of percentage. I told you any format to percentage control shift and five. So when I go for control shift and five, is it changing the format to percentage? Yes. 
formula is applied only with one cell, but you need to apply for others. Double click on that field handle and your growth percentage also will be ready. Give it a try. Uh, sir, can you show that alt equals once again, please? Keeping your uh, cursor in this total cell mm -hmm. and then alt with equal to this alt on the left side with mm -hmm. equal symbol pressed together. It will be giving you a sum function like this immediately over here if you look at and then you have to just hit enter. Actually, I was hitting the other alt key. From the right side. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it will be making you a zoom. If mm -hmm. you go to it will make it a zoom because in laptop we have keyboards and so some keyboard uh, keys are integrated key, like it will be adding two, three keys combined together to one. Mm -hmm. yes, just to make it compatible. Sir, can you explain that revenue percentage? Revenue percentage is nothing but each and every revenue taking that equal to Jan month revenue divided by total revenue and that value should not move down. Total revenue should not move down because each and every month wise we should divide only with total revenue. That's why we have locked it and once you lock and hit enter, this will be giving you a decimal answer. So when you go for decimal answer, you want to convert into percentage. So any format to percentage format control shift five we have to press together so when i go and press control shift and five it will be giving me the entire answer in terms of percentage and the same we can apply for others double click on the fill hand yes, yeah no problem see all these things are very much needed nobody will be demanding from you this you have to give it from yourself so that your presentation will stand out of the crowd. Fine. Now, once we have done with this growth percentage, what else we can do with our data? Take a look at this first. Try to understand. Suppose say I have completed my business for the month of Jan and somebody asked me, Pravas, how much revenue you have made? What will be my answer? 3963 US dollar. Right now, same answer. I need to give it after completing the Feb month. What will be my answer? Whatever my Jan month revenue, I will add it with Feb month and I will state that answer. Same thing when I complete for March, Jan plus Feb plus March. If I complete for April, Jan plus Feb plus March plus April. What do you call of these things? You should call it as over here, naming as cumulative or accumulation of the data, or we can check this scroll as a over here in Excel language, running total. What do you call this running total? But the moment you are presenting the same in the corporate reports, we call it as YTD year to till date. Since you are beginning over here. Till any point of time, if you want to check the result, this YTD column will be giving you the result. Similarly, one more column is they call MTD. If you are working only with the monthly data, so month, since month beginning at any point of time, how much records of anything you are looking for? then it will be giving you MTD. All right, so YTD column is ready. Now 
what would be the formula for YTD calculation? We are going to discuss that. Now watch my screen for a minute. Since Jan month is the first month of my calendar year, whatever my Jan month revenue, can I treat the same as a YTD for the month of Jan? What do you say? Whatever my Jan month revenue, can I take the same as YTD for the month of Jan? OK, so what you can do, we can put a formula equal to YTD for the month of Jan is nothing but Jan month revenue. Now when I go to FAVE, what would be the formula? See here people always commit a mistake. You need to take the Jan month YTD, not the Jan month revenue value. Jan month YTD plus FAVE month current revenue. Then it makes your cumulative value over here. And same you can apply for others. Double click on the fill handle. How will you know you are done the right track? If you look at your data over here in YTD for the month of December, whatever it is showing, is it matching with your total revenue? Yes, so we are in the right track. Whatever we did, it is giving me the YTD value properly. Check and confirm, please. Is it working? All right now YTD in terms of value, maybe my immediate boss would be happy watching the same, but the data when it goes to the management level, they are interested in knowing YTD in terms of percentage. So let's go and check create a column naming called YTD percentage and now we are going to discuss what would be the formula for YTD percentage calculations. It will be very easy, very simple also just see what I'm doing. I will select everything of YTD percentage column, cell reference, and on my keypad, I will just press a command called Control R, fill right. Control R, fill right. So automatically data will be populated, but it is coming up in terms of decimals. And we know our YTD percentage has to be in terms of our percentages. So what you can do to convert any format to percentage control shift five. Now how to confirm we are in the right track. As I told you earlier, if you look at your December month YTD percentage, is it matching with your total percentage over here? So this is how we have understood that. How to confirm? All these columns are ready and how to cross check that we don't need to have some third parties consideration or certification about that that we are in the right track. We can just rectify our formula itself. So if at all any question is there, do let me know. If it is done, then please confirm with deeper done or Y for yes. The control R, right? For us? Yeah, yeah. Control R, okay. Why is coming something different? You can show your screen. Let me have a look. Oh, okay, we got it. I actually, yeah, no problem. 
So anybody is having any trouble or you are not getting this, you have something different answers, need my support, do let me know. So is it clear? Can I take that? Yes, no. Yes. Right, thank you. So imagine we had only two columns of data, but this much of task is pending. As I told you, nobody will be demanding for all these things. This information is very, very essential for the data and you have to keep presenting the same. And it is not confined to accounts, finance, production, planning or stores or HR. Any department, wherever you are working with, all these calculations are very, very essential. All right. Now, once we have this, then what you need to do the next, keep your cursor anywhere in the data and go for Control A. So when you go for Control A, can you see the whole amount of data is in selection? So this is the best way to select your entire range of your data. And now, Remember one thing, whenever you have the table of multiple columns, always give a feel of a table. But how? By applying the borders. And how to apply the borders? By going to home, borders, and all borders, whatever you do with the help of your mouse, same thing you can do with keyboard shortcut also by simply going for Alt. So when you press Alt, can you see on your ribbon tab, Whatever the predefined keys assigned to each and every ribbon menu options, is it getting highlighted on the screen? Now, for border application, we should go for home. So which keys assigned in the home tab? H. So you should press H. Now we have navigated to the home tab. Then in that, for border, what is the key assigned? B. Now within border, you can see over here which key is assigned for all borders. It is A. So now when you go and press A now over here, automatically what will be happening, the entire data, whatever you have selected, it will be applied with the borders. So what is the keyboard shortcut? Is Alt, H for home, B for border, A for all borders. So this is with the help of keyboard shortcuts. You can make use of that. No hard and fast tool, but yes, if you take this keyboard shortcut, it will be very, very helpful in saving your time. Check, is it working? So is it working? Can I take your consent? Y for yes or no, D for done. Done. Okay. Now, once we have done with this, 
Yes, Sudha, what is that you have missed out? See, what we did, selecting our data, we press Alt. You can notice all this entire ribbon tab, predefined keys are assigned to over here. We need to go and press H. Leave the Alt button, now press H. Now you are in the Home tab. In Home tab, for border, the key is assigned called B. You have to press B. Now within border, you have the assigned option called A. So you have to press A. So that's called Alt H B A is the keyboard shortcut for entire cell for application of all borders. One by one, no need to press all together. If you are not comfortable, no hard and fast tool. If you are comfortable using mouse, home, border, all border also fine. No problem. All right. Right, Sudha, is it clear? It Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, so don't worry. Now, <clears throat> coming back to next. Over here, our latest style of data presentation, it says that if you have multiple columns, first column should be always aligned to the left and rest of columns always aligned to the center. So leave the first column, select the rest of the columns and for central alignment, where do you go? Home tab. And within that, we should go for central alignment. This is what we prefer to go. Same thing we need to do. If you are interested in learning keyboard shortcut, I'll tell you just watch my screen. Alt H for home. Now, if I go for alignment over here, if I go for alignment, what will be happening in this alignment tab? If you look at I'm just working with full screen. Alt H then in alignment for Central alignment. What is the key assigned? A, C, one by one. A for alignment, C for center. And data will be aligned properly. So this is how a keyboard shortcut will learn for central alignment. Naming called Alt, H, A, C. So H for home, A for alignment, C for center. All right now. Once we have done with this little bit beautification of also data required, right? So what you can do selecting your entire month column the way I have selected. You should go to your home tab. Cell styles you have a option and within that if you look at in the theme cell style category, you can choose any options out of this. That will be looking more elegant. Similarly, for top row, you can select going to home tab. Again, cell styles over here and you need to take the help of the last row item from theme cell styles. Whichever the colors you like, you can take that. OK, now what it happens? The data looks elegant, not too much of loud with the colors, but yes, whoever is watching, they will be very happy watching the data presentation. So this is how people imagine only two columns. We had the data, but this much of task is pending. And whenever you do so, whoever is watching our data, they will be very happy watching the same. And if you want presenting something over there, how to present it? Because these are the things we prepared in Excel and how people are demanding. They will be demanding in PowerPoint. So since we have done the things in Excel better, we no need to struggle in PowerPoint. So what we can do, we can simply copy the data, whatever I have, and go to our PowerPoint. Just watch my screen. Then in PowerPoint, I don't need to struggle much over here. Simply, I can remove everything and right click on the paste as image. OK, so. Now I can finally increase this length, width, whatever it is. And when I'm presenting the same to the audience, 
Do you see it's giving a neat and clean presentation? Yes. Since we have done the things better in Excel, we hardly need to struggle in PowerPoint. So that's what the beauty over there, people, how to make our data informative and if necessary, how to do the minimum presentations over there that we got the clarity. So just check. Is there any question you have in this first session? How to make our data informative? So any questions, feel free to ask if it is done. Kindly confirm before done. All right, now we'll see how to make our data presentable. OK, so how to make our data informative? We saw different different calculations or so statistical calculations, how to make it. Now we'll see how to make our data presentable, which is below exactly. So you can see same year data is there like for one year data is there with us. Keep your cursor anywhere in the data and go for control A. Now. To make it presentable, what I suggest is convert your data into table and to convert our data into table, go for control T, T for tango, T for table. And immediately it will take you through a dialog box, something like this and click OK. So once you click OK, you will be finding a beautiful tabular format over here of the data. Alternate rows are highlighted, column header as defined as proper header of colors and filter buttons also embedded. And when you look at the top and bottom rows is highlighted. So all these things are happening with a simple keyboard shortcut. Now, if you're not happy with this, you want to change your own color because it is taking the system format, default format. You want to give something of your own. See, where to find that? Going to home, there is an option called format as table. Format as table. It opens with three broad categories, light, medium, dark. So whichever you like it, light and medium, you can take it. Do not ever go for the dark options because the more the dark color, again, Excel file size will be more. So you have to be very particular. So I'll take suppose a medium category out of this. And the moment I go and click it, this will be giving the same application. Looks good, elegant. Right, people. So control T, is it working for you all? Any difficulties or well, anybody's not getting Now, our revenue data is ready. Now, suppose say this is what I have prepared and presented. My boss is immediately asking, Prabhas, you have given me the revenue data. That's fine. But I want to know to generate this much of revenue, how much incentives we have given. Now, suppose say in our organization, we have a uniform policy that 
whatever the revenue we generate out of that 2% we declare as an incentive. So having said this, now if I want to prepare an incentive column, so you can go and prepare incentive column. And now the moment you hit enter, see the beauty, what happens? Similar formatting is immediately carried forward to the next column. Right. So when you create a table or design a table, automatically format never goes. How this is happening? Because we have converted our data into table. So you can save your time. You can imagine because of format as table option, Excel is taking care about the entire formatting. Only thing is we need to focus with our formula. So what would be the formula for incentive calculations? As we discussed, 2% on revenue. So we'll go for equal to taking the data from left. It will take some kind of own formatting like at the red symbol, square brackets, column header name. These are the default formatting of table. We don't need to go and keep typing all these things manually. Now simply multiply as discussed. How many percentage? 2%. So when you go for 2% and hit enter, can you see it is not only applying to a cell, but also the entire column. So you don't need to copy paste your formula, drag the formula, double click on the fill handle. Can you imagine how your speed is also increasing because of this format as table option? Right. Check and confirm. Is it working? So incentive, is it clear? Can I please give a confirmation? All right, now once we have done with this next column, we need to have one more column naming called suppose say net revenue. So just go and type net revenue. And the moment you hit enter, can you see again similar formatting has been carried forward? So this is how people we have understood because of format as table option, how our data entry action is very easy for us and we can avoid the duplication of work over there. Now, net revenue column, what would be the formula? Simple basic mathematics, revenue minus incentive. So equal to revenue column. Again, it takes its own formatting, don't worry, minus incentive. Just a simple formula as you give it, same, same fashion you have to give it over here. And the moment I hit enter, I could see my net revenue column is ready, right? So this is how people you notice because of table format, how our data entry action is easy. Formatting is automatically taken care by Microsoft Excel. Now to complete this task over here, whatever we did to complete this task, what we can do, let's discuss that. Okay. As you see in our data, we do not have a total yet. Technically, we prepare our total manually, but here there is no need at all. So what you can do, keep your cursor anywhere in the data set in this table. Can you see we have an option called table design or design or options depending upon the versions of Microsoft Excel we are having. And there when you go for table design, you can notice we have an option called total row which is not selected. And when you select this total row checkbox on, then automatically what will be happening? Over here, the total of net revenue column is ready. 
Now, what if I want my revenue column total? No issues. I can keep my cursor and there if you see a drop down will be always be ready. Now you can click on the drop down and whatever that you are looking for, say if I want to the total. So ideally, what would be the formula? Some formula. So I can go for some. OK. So what's the beauty of this? Everything is there. Only thing is we need to customize according to the need. So that's what the beauty of our table format. Check, is it working? Any doubt? So is it clear? Working for all? Any doubt, any queries, whatever we discussed so far? What's banded columns? Banded means this is what the banded columns like alternate rows are highlighted. No, if you do not want, you can leave it. This checkbox. Okay. Banded rows, banded columns. So if you want banded columns, vertically it will be alternate columns will be highlighted. If you want banded rows, horizontally alternate rows will be highlighted. So it's all the controls measures over here. Mm -hmm. All right. So I believe all clear. Yeah. <laughs> Now take a look. Though we have made all these things, but our data, if you look at, it's still not great. So if you look at our all these columns, like as I told you, when you have multiple columns, first column should be always aligned left. Rest of the columns should be always aligned center. And for center, I told you the keyboard shortcut Alt H A C one by one. Otherwise, you can go to home and you can go to central alignment choice is yours Now here, once we have done with this, you can notice in our data there is one more drawback. Our column headers are not properly displayed, and this is what most mostly common, uh, I mean, problem in our routine activities. Whenever you download the data or whenever you copy paste your Excel data from one place to other, you always get this kind of hash kind of symbols, and we always what we do, we take our mouse pointer, double click, double click, we keep expanding the columns. That is really painful. I'll tell you a very beautiful option. See, select your data, except month, rest of the columns, including the headers, and go for Alt. Then we need to go to Home, H for Home. Then we need to go to Format, O for Format. Then we need to go for Auto Fit, that is I. So Alt H O I is called Auto Fit of Column Width. Very beautiful keyboard shortcut and will be very, very helpful in our routine activities. Alt H O I, auto fit of column width. See, I'm not insisting you 
for the keyboard shortcuts. But yes, if you are really interested in saving your turnaround time, you must train yourself to the keyboard shortcut. Okay. But you do have a choice if you are not comfortable, if you believe, Prabhas, I may forget the keyboard shortcuts. So you can go to home, format, and over here. And when you go to format over here, we have an option auto fit of column width. So it's up to you. Either you take your mouse help or you take the help of keyboard shortcuts. Objective is work to be done. Column should be properly adjusted. Hope it is working. So how to make our data presentable? How to make our data informative? We got the clarity. Any difficulties? Any questions from anybody? Feel free to ask. So all these things you have to practice people, and this is how you can make your presentation a bit better. Because data anybody can prepare. And nowadays in Excel also people start pointing out, looking at your presentation part, how you present your data. That makes a lot of difference. Right, all clear? Yes, no. Yes. Right, great. Now, take a look. Once we have done with this, now kindly select only the numbers. Select only the numbers. Now, remember one thing while working in Excel, you have to present your data with proper data format, like what I mean to say, if it is a date, should be in proper date format. If it is a percentage, it should be in percentage format. If it is a currency, it should be in currency format. So like that, if the data is in terms of numbers, we have to present in number format. Now, what is the meaning by number format? So ideally, there should be a decimal uniformly. Then post decimal maximum two characters. Then before decimal, there should be a comma. So this is what the formatting of our numbers, but how to make it? I'll tell you there's a beautiful keyboard shortcut. What you can do on your numerical keypad just in our numerical one. Can you see one exclamatory mark is there? So you have to take this key help along with control and shift. So control shift one to convert any format to number format. Just check it out. Control shift one. Is it happening? Yes. So see. Simple, simple keyboard shortcuts, how it is making our job done and how it is saving our time, we have witnessed so far. So this is what the story people, our data presentation sheet. If you have any questions, feel free to ask before proceeding further. It's control or one. No, no. Control shift one. All right, now 
let's go for our next sheet people naming called date calculation so this is also again one more essential formula what we are going to discuss now and it will be very very helpful in many more cases but first let's focus with the ask and then how to get it over there what kind of formula or function we should use let's have a discussion see suppose say these are the employees working in my department and my management has given me a task stating that Prabhas, we are sending the date of joining of your employees, department employees. Please find out their experience as on date in terms of years, months and days. I repeat, these are the employees working in my department. My management has given me the date of joining of those employees. I need to compute their experience as on date since the date of joining in terms of years, months and days. So how to present that? Technically, this kind of puzzles, when you want to solve it, people, there is only one way out naming curve by using the formula we have to use called date diff. What is that? Date diff. This is a hidden formula of Microsoft Excel. Since 1985 till 2024 version of Microsoft Excel, this formula is hidden. Then how to use this? And if you look at to prove that it's a hidden formula, I'll show you something. Since morning, whatever the formula we have, I mean, since afternoon, whatever the formula we have discussed, if you go and try to type, Excel automatically gives you some kind of helping hand. Now, even if you go for over here for the open bracket, it also gives you how to write the formulas. Right? Whereas if you go for date diff, do you see any kind of formula help or instructions by Microsoft Excel? No. But trust me, there's a formula called date diff. Since instructions are not visible, we have to work together. So let's start working with that. Keep your cursor below to the year and go for equal to date diff. Date diff. Make sure you're typing your spelling properly. D-A-T-E-D-I-F. Okay, now bracket open. Now, how to start with? See. Simple logic, any date formula, whenever you are working with, it always start with a start date. So we'll go for our start date, which is date of joining in the left. Comma. Now, once this is done over here, what is that next input? The next input is since date of joining till what date we are looking for till today's date. And to generate today's date, we can go for a simple formula today, open bracket, close bracket. So this is predefined. It will always take today's date from our system and it will be giving the result. Right now, comma. What is the third input? Which column we are trying to compute the difference is the year. So our third input has to define our year component. So for your component purpose, you can go and take a blank cell above to the year. Bracket close. We know we have not yet defined any value. We have taken the cell reference. Fine. Just bracket close and hit enter. Now this is going to give you some errors. We know what is the reason. Because out of three inputs, only two inputs have been given and third one is still defined to a blank cell. So go to that blank cell. As we know, our date format, how it is? DDMMYY or MMDDYY. So where D stands for day, M stands for month, Y stands for year, we know that. Now to represent our year, go to that blank cell and define just Y, only Y. And the moment it enter, can you see we are receiving some answer over there? So though date diff is a hidden formula, but this giving some sort of answer, we got the clarity. And what is the role of today's date to generate today's date over there from our system? What is the role of Y to represent our year? Check it out. Are you getting all this 15? Any doubt, any queries? Do let me know.
sir, till formula it is okay, but uh, would you mind explaining how exactly we get 15 here? How exactly means what is today's date? Today's date is 20th, yeah. but uh, the formula one which minute, you one mentioned. Minute, one minute, one minute. Uh, let me let me complete, then I'll uh, uh, answer your second question. Mm -hmm. So you asked me how 15 has come. What is today's uh, date? I what is today's no, date? I asked. Actually, mm -hmm. I wanted to know. See, uh, till the point where it was showing uh, hash num, that is okay because uh, that is not in the year format. Now. How exactly this has been changed to 15 from uh, that hash num that I wanted to know? OK, now instead of going for this D5, OK, mm -hmm. since I am operating in my year column, first watch my screen. Uh, mm -hmm. If I am operating my year column, if you remember, what is the standard date format we discussed? DDM. So uh, what is the role of Y? That's a year. That's what. So same thing when you go for text formula, if you want to extract a month, how many times M we had used? For month, uh, three. Four times? Uh, yeah, four times, sorry. Yeah. Like for day, we have used D four times, mm -hmm. right? So how it is acting like if I go for this, because this is already predefined by Microsoft Excel, right? Mm -hmm. So now instead of taking this as a separate cell help, if I want to find my answer in terms of year, I can define within two double inverted code Y. So okay. instead of defining over here, I have taken a separate cell help. That's it. Mm -hmm. So here also I'll be getting that 15. OK, so even if I delete this, I'm getting 15. So instead of doing in the same cell, what I did, I have taken the separate cell help over here. That's it. That is the difference. Mm -hmm. Hope it is clear now. Yeah. yeah. OK, great. Yes. Any other questions from anybody people in date deep so far, whatever we have done? This is going to help you a lot, so please ensure you are clear from this point. If I tell any small issues or concerns is there, feel free to ask. All right. Now let's do a hands in practice for month. Let's go for M and for day. Let's go for D and let's recreate the formula for month and day. Don't drag it. Don't copy paste it. Since the formula instructions are not visible, I request again start working with the formula equal to dead diff. Bracket open. What it demands start date. That is date of joining. Yes, comma. End date is nothing but today's date. I'll go for it. Comma. Then our month calculation for Excel operator M. And this will be giving me 183. Similarly, if I go for day is equal to date diff. Date of joining. Comma. End date. Today formula. Comma. Excel operator. Help. So your formula should look like something like this. Check it out. Are you getting the answer? Are you getting the same value? Kindly confirm. 
in year column 15, month column 183, day column 5589. If you are having a different answer, let me know. Or if you have any other problem, please feel free to ask. Yes, people, can somebody confirm me? Is it ready? Fine. Now, please stay focused on my screen. No need to do anything. Do you believe that this is the right way to express our data? Someone's experience in this format, like 15 years, 183 months, 5,589 days? No. So what is this difference about? These are nothing but individual component-wise differences. Year-wise 15, month-wise 183, and day-wise 5,589. Now suppose say over here, if I go and discuss otherwise, month column, focus, how many months it is showing? 183. And we know one thing, whenever number of month reaches to 12, it becomes one year. Now if I ask you in what 83 months, how many complete years are there? What will be your answer? What will you do? We'll go for a simple formula equal to number of months divided by 12, right? So this will be giving the answer 15 decimal 25, right? So now what is that 15 meaning over here? Nothing but 15 complete years, correct? So when 15 complete years we have already given, how it can be able to express again in the month? Definitely not. So this is the place where it has gone wrong. So how to rectify this? Just say. No need to go and do any extraordinary activity. Just go to month call. That is M where it is written. Go for YM. So what is that YM stands for? Year to month. The incomplete months in a complete year. And the moment you hit enter, can you see? The complete years have been removed and it is just left with the leftover months. That is three months. Similarly, if you go for days from D, go for MD, month to date. The incomplete month in a complete days. So over here, if you look at like 15 years, three months, 20 days, we got the answer. Check it out. Are you getting the same? So now we have understood that though DD is a hidden formula, how to write it? What is the role of Y, YM, MD as year, year to month, month to date? That is what operation? Yes, Sudha, year to month. Year to month in the sense, 
the complete years it has been removed. If I go for M only, what is that it was giving me? Just only M. It was giving me the total number of months. So when I divide by 12, what it is giving me? The number of years, 15 years, 25 months. 25 months I can't consider because it's a decimal character. So but 15 years, it is already given to the year. So it should left over only with the balance months, which is less than 12. So what you can do for that? YM. This is already defined by Microsoft Excel. YM, year to month. If you are not confirmed, then you can go to F1 and you can check the DD formula. And here also you can see the DD formula it will be giving. So for sage, DD function. So when I go and search in my help command, it will be showing me DD formula. So though it is a hidden formula, can you see how to write this? What is this Y, M, D? What is the role? And if you go for this more detail in the function, see. Now what it is saying, MD, the difference between the days in the start date and end date, the months and years dates are ignored. Similarly, YM, the difference between the months and the start date and end date, the days and the years are ignored. YD, MD, all these things are completely explained over here. So MD stands for nothing but month to date. YM stands for year to month. So this is how you can go for this kind of formulas and you can get your result. Hope it is okay. clear now. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Now, once we have done with this, our formula is ready only for a cell or only for a particular employee, but the, all the rest of employees, how to get the computation, how to get that experience. As we know, we can select and go for double click on the fill handle. Now, except the first case, rest of the cases, it is showing error. Why it is showing error? First, try to understand. If you go to our first error, you can realize when I copy this formula towards down, along with my date of joining movement, my Excel operator is also moving down. Can you see that modern color border? It is moving from Y to year, right? So this is what the problem, and we have already noticed the same in small and large also. And for that, we have logged them. So how to log them, where to rectify? See, ideally, people believe that where the error starts with, I need to rectify the formula from there. No. Since your formula starts from 15, this is the first cell. You need to select everything. Open the formula, which is creating a trouble, D5. So I should go for D5, keeping the cursor over there, and lock it by hitting F4. So formula is rectified only with one cell need to apply for rest, control, enter. Similarly, month I'll go, which keys, which cell is creating a trouble, E5, I should lock it. And then same, I can apply for others. Similarly, day column, I should lock F5 and then control, enter. So this is how your formula, you have to rectify. Just try this and check your formula is looking like this. Any difficulties, feel free to ask.
So is it working? Can you please confirm? Or any doubt, any queries, do let me know. So are you getting all the answer? Any doubt, any queries, or can somebody confirm me? If it is done, we can proceed further. Um, right. Now, Knowing about this formula hidden one that is called date diff, are you happy? Because there are so many cases you can solve the equations like whenever you happen to calculate the difference between two setup of dates, or if you're working with multiple projects, what is the experience on the each and every project you want to compute in terms of your month and days, you can compute that. Or if you're from HR side, you are computing the G, I mean your gratuity calculations, you can also take this help from the help. So there are many more cases you can use that. But are you happy knowing about this formula? My question is simple. Yep. Yes. OK. All right, now I'm asking a question a bit different way. Please stay focused. Going to each and every column, editing the formula, three different times and locking the cell in three different column, three different times. Are you comfortable doing the same? Mm -hmm. Going to each and every column, three different times, three different columns, editing the formula, locking the cell. Are you comfortable doing the same? No. Definitely not. So when you are not comfortable, do you believe that Microsoft will ever ex recommend to do the job like this? Definitely not. So what we did people, just for the understanding, I'll tell you, this is what our experts suggest us to do the job like this. But Microsoft Excel never recommends for that. OK, so what we did, Basically, this is what we are not supposed to do. So kindly select and delete. That answer area, kindly select and delete. Now we'll see how to make an improvement over there. And in this kind of situation, how to design our formula so that we don't need to go and keep working with individual columns and locking the cells and all. One shot, one go, enter formula should give the result to us. But how to do that? Just see. As we develop the practice, first you select all your entire area selected. OK, go for immediately equal to and type the formula date diff. Make sure you're typing your spelling properly. Since the instructions are not visible, there might be a chance you commit the mistake. So please remember the formula name is date diff, D-A-T-E-D-I-F. Now, what it demands start date. We have the start date in the left. Now hold on there. Once you select that cell from the left side of your formula, now hold on there. Take like look at my screen. It has taken a reference of C7. Now what is C7? C is the column. What is that? C is the column. What is 7? Seven? 7 is the row. 
So cell is nothing but the combination of first is the column and second is the row. So when I copy this formula towards down C7, where it will go? It will go to C8. Then when I further down C9, C10, C11 and so on. So if you see the movement C7, C8, C9, C10, always which one sounds common? C is the common. What is C? C is the column. Now what you have understood, our data is moving because C7, it has to go to C8 now, so it is moving, but it is moving within a column. So when data is moving within a column, instead of locking the complete cell, we have to lock only the column. And to lock the column only, we have to bring the dollar symbol before column. And to bring the dollar symbol before column, F4, three times, F4 thrice. So you'll be having only one dollar symbol before column, and that we call it as column lock column constant and column freeze. Now, what is the meaning by column freeze? Just see, when I copy this formula towards right, C7 will definitely not go to E7 because column is locked. Column C will never go to column D. But when I copy this formula towards down, C7 will definitely go to C8 because row is free. So this setup was missing. You have given it comma, so first input is clear. Why we did three times F4 and what happened with that and what you call that? Right. Now, coming to next input. So start date is given. Now end date. End date is nothing but today's date. So today's date we can generate by using today formula. This doesn't need any kind of locking because today formula itself does self implied that whichever the cell you go and design this formula, it will always pick today's date. Wherever you keep this formula, it will always generate this date only. So it doesn't need any kind of locking. So second input, today formula, why we have given, is it clear? Yes. Right. Now, once we have done with this over here, what is the next thing we should do? Comma, going to our Excel operator that is called Y, and that is there in my D5 cell. So when I copy this formula towards down, D5 should not move down. That is to D6, it should not move down. Then it will be a problem. But when I copy this formula towards right, D5 should go to E5 for month calculation. E5 should go to F5 for day calculation. So there is a moment, D5, E5, F5. And what is sounds common is five. What is five? Five is the row. So we have understood our data is moving, but it is moving within a row. So when data is moving within a row, instead of locking the entire cell, only lock the row. And to lock the row only, go for F4 twice, F4 two times. This is nothing but going to be a set of like row constant or row freeze or row lock. Now, what is the meaning by row freeze? When I copy this formula towards down, D5 will definitely not going to go for D6 because row is locked, number five is locked. But when I copy this formula towards right, D5 will definitely go to E5 since column is free. So this setup was missing and we used to spend a lot of time people. Now we have sent it, I mean, we are set it across over here, bracket close. Now formula is ready. Only need to apply for rest as we know what is the shortcut control enter 
So this is how people we are supposed to design the formula in a table. And we can avoid the duplication of work. We can save our time and people love to see our answers. So give it a try. Check all these things are working. Any doubt, any queries, do let me know, please. So is it clear? Can I take that? Any doubt, any queries? So taking the live data, keep practicing about all these things, people. So this is it from our day one side. So we discussed so many formulas like small, large with row. Then we have seen the logical formula like if how to apply, then max mean how to apply in a different concept also. Network does international to compute the difference, e date to calculate a future date, text to ascertain your day and month, and year formula to extract your year. Keyboard shortcut, control shift three for any format to date. Then data presentation, we saw how to make our data informative, taking different different types of statistical calculations. To convert our data into percentage, we saw control shift five. Then we saw how to make our data presentable by hitting simply control T to convert your data into table. And then we saw how to convert our any format to number control shift one. And then we saw a hidden formula of Excel called date diff. And today formula how to use in the formula to make it dynamic. And what is Y, Y, M, M, D, year, year to month and month to date. And then how to make use of this dollar symbol F for once, twice, thrice, those things we saw. All right. So these things you have to practice people. OK, before coming for our day two, I would suggest you just one time brush up everything and come. If you have still any doubts or queries, you can very well drop a message in the group. So. Instead of waiting for two o'clock, we'll be logging in to the meeting room by 145 and we'll be clarifying all our doubts from day one from 145 p.m. to 2 p.m. And dot 2 p.m. will be starting with our session. So we need to adhere to the time schedule so that we can complete our task and whatever the guaranteed content we have planned, we can cover it up also. But practice is very, very essential. All right. So any doubt, any queries from the day? You'll be getting the recordings. 
Yeah, you will be getting the recordings by maximum 9 p.m. today. OK, yes. Any doubts, please? No, no doubt, no doubt straight. OK, fine. All right, so kindly save all your workbooks.